Oh, nice. yeah. exactly. Yes. Welcome in, welcome in Sports Day, Jacob Sports YouTube Network. Hope you guys are doing great out there. That's Derek Gunn. That's Barrett Brooks. I am Rob Ellis. What's up, Tyler, Duck, Adam, Chris D, John, Anthony, Ray. How you guys doing? Hope everybody's doing well out there. We appreciate you guys hanging out with us. Everybody on the stream, everybody just listening, just hanging out, driving around, doing some uh, some honeydew stuff or some yard work, whatever the case may be, hanging out with us at work. We do appreciate it. How we doing, boys? On this, Good? On on this, this happy April Fool's Eve. <laughs> April Fool's Eve, that is correct. Yes, yes. Day before, man, and we're almost into April. Uh Weather wouldn't wouldn't tell you that where we're at, but you know we're we're getting there. We're getting there. It's gonna be warm tomorrow, but really wet tomorrow. Really, rainy. yeah, man. I'm enjoying it though, man. Come on, man. I mean, it, this is this is we're going we're heading into summer, so I'm good with it, man. I'm good with it. Oh yeah, we're we're definitely headed the right way. Yeah, that's yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, it's time yeah. to get there. Time to get ready. Get your boats ready. Get them ready to get out in the water. You know, go in, take a look, re- overhaul your. Your fishing rods, you know, I got to go in my garage, do my spring cleaning in my garage, clean it up a little bit for, you know, get started, man. This is this is this is the time what you prepare for the summer. This That's is right. preparation time. Prep time, yes, yep. absolutely, man, absolutely. So, man, I went uh, out of my garage yesterday evening. Yeah, I, I wanted to cry, man. It looks like it's like a hurricane went through there, man. I got, I, I got the Tasmanian devil went through my my garage, man. <laughs> I got paint everywhere. I got. Dude, I, mean, I got, I I got, got bags, pools, <laughs> bicycles, right, uh, right, fishing. right. Oh my goodness, man! But I'm looking at this weather thing. Now, Mother Nature, Mother Nature's toying with this because they're talking about 72 tomorrow. Now it's up to 90 percent chance of rain. Then Sunday, 54. Then the next days after that goes 68, 75, 74, 74, 57, 49, 57. Ooh. So Mother Nature's toying with us. Yeah, it's, wow. it's that time of year, man. March and April in the the greater Philadelphia area is a mixed brat bag of tricks, man. You don't know what you could get a stone cold winter freezing day. Man. Yesterday was freezing. I was out early yesterday morning around eight, and man, was it cold, right? And then ridiculously cold. Yeah, and then you could get seventy, and it, and it's like in the blink of an eye, and then go back to the same thing the next day. It's just it's a weird, weird time in our area, man. They call them up. My grandma and my mom say this is pneumonia weather. This is where you catch that pneumonia. Because yeah, you, you think you're that. good. You're out there, you know, in a T-shirt uh-huh. or something. And, and, yeah, boom, it hits. Yeah, I hear you. Dude, I'm a, I go out and about, like, the stores and stuff, and I'll see younger people walking around parking lots, in and out of stores, flip-flops on, no socks. Yeah. You know, shorts, cargo shorts, you know, short skirts. I'm like, I got on a hoodie and a jacket, and I'm like, <laughs> I don't, I didn't even do that when I was younger. I was you know what you notice? Way. It's it's always a guy. Like you rarely see a a, a female in in freezing cold weather dressed like that. They're, they're obviously they're way smarter oh, than that. I'm seeing more of them, man. But I can't I'm like yeah, you, more girls. you always yeah, but you always see like a dude in shorts and flip flops when true. it's like 35, true. and you're like, really? You're not freezing? You know, I'm bundled up like it's. Yeah, like it's gonna be, you know. Yeah, no, you you can't take cold weather, man. That's one thing about you. I mean, I, I get, I get Rob. Right. <laughs> Look, Rob. I, hi, Mama Brooks. Uh, Mama I got, Brooks. dude. I got the blanket here. I got the whole thing, man. I don't, <laughs> I don't mess around. See, see, you guys, you guys are both in a basement, though, right? That's true. No, but see, I got, basement I got is a, freezing. I got an extra yeah. layer to me, though. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Yeah, but I you're losing that layer. layer. You're losing weight. Yeah, yeah. You know, right. I am it's starting to get a little cooler too. You know what I mean? I'm starting to get, you know, See? start feeling a little bit, but still. Well, no. Welcome to my welcome to the skinny world, man. No, yeah, well, you're, you're gonna be like a smaller man. guy. All of a sudden, that bones, that, that wind start that little chill hits your bones. <laughs> it takes you long, a little bit longer to to loosen up and stretch you know the muscles out. And, mm-hmm. It's crazy that for 12 years, I would be out in sub zero weather with no sleeves on, playing in the game. It's absolutely ridiculous. What was I thinking about? That tough guy, offensive line, we're tough. We don't need sleeves on. When people are – you could actually get frostbite from being out there. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? I and never – I always – like, especially like, like games in Green Bay, and you could appreciate this because you played there. But, like, it's it's a it's a Monday night game, and you know, the wind chills minus 15. Yes. And dudes are out there in short sleeves. I'm like – Yes. This is different. They, they're just different breeds, man. The, the guys no, we, who handle that kind of stuff. Like the receivers would do the same thing. You know what I'm saying? Not just us, the receivers. Yeah. Like Aaron Donald. Aaron Donald. I mean, uh, not Aaron Donald, but uh, Donald Driver. Yeah. 
Donald Driver, he wouldn't wear sleeves. You know, he was out there. He was a Viking, man. He, he you know, he, he, he was feeling the same thing, you know. Um, I'm out there one time. So we they should outlaw games in Green Bay <laughs> on Monday nights. Just outlaw the December. Green Bay period. Yeah, yeah. been there. Done that. Been there. It's so cold, man, that you 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 can't even like you sweat because you run around, you sweat for a second. As soon as you take a helmet off, it yep. instantly freezes. That's how yep. cold it is out there. So we go out, we play in the game. We play in Minnesota. We go out on the field and it's 12 degrees. Oh. 12 degrees. We go back in at halftime, and this is a Monday night game. We come back out, it's minus seven. Minus seven, bro. I'm like, come on, man. Minus seven. If that and you can't. You really don't even feel the difference between twelve and minus seven. Yeah, right. At that point, yeah. yeah you but, know, but you're so cold. But I have sleeves part. on. Hold on, but so I so I go out the first half. I don't have any sleeves on. Yeah. I go out in the second half, and I got sleeves on. So as I'm going out on the field, my offensive line coach Larry Bechtel turns around, looks at me, and he's steaming. I said, "All right, all right, all right, all right, all right." All right. So I cut the sleeves off, and I went on back. You I cut went them on, off. I cut them off, and I went on back out there. And I'm thinking to myself, so halfway through the second half, I go to Larry. I said, hey, Larry, you, you just told me to cut my sleeves off. You need to take that jacket off and take that hat off, man, and feel what I'm feeling. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm, I'm, on, I'm on the bench. I'm only going out there in special teams, goal line, yeah, tight end. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Every once in a while, they have a big package where I play tight end. And I go in. I'm like, bro, I'm cold, man. I ain't got no jacket, bro. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I don't, I don't want to hear that, Barrett. Get over yeah. there, bit. Get over there. You know, I'm like, come on, coach, man. You, you know, you tripping, man. I hear you. A lot, a lot of players make the mistake that 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 think that when they come off the field, they run right over to those those portable heaters, those burn, those blowers, and when you stand in front of those, your body sweats a little bit, and all of a sudden you get away from it. You even colder because you got that sweat on you now that's chilling as well, and you go back out there in the field again. So mm -hmm. it's like that. The Chicago and Green Bay use that as an advantage. Now, obviously, yep. it hasn't worked much. In recent years for Chicago, but in, in Green Bay for that matter, this past season. But you know that was always back in the day a psychological advantage over teams. But you know what though, that psychological uh, advantage. When I'm in, I was in Detroit for two years, and we played Green Bay twice in Green Bay. It seemed like we always played them when it was cold weather. We never played them, you know, when it was it was cool. Like we never played them in September. Right. right. Never played them in October. We only played them in November, December. Jeez. Long story long, it'd be snowing. We were in Detroit. We got an indoor. We can just go on indoor practice. It's so cold outside in Detroit. It's got like two foot of snow on the field. We're out there practicing. Nobody's paying attention because everybody's cold. You can't see where the lines are. We're having a bad practice, man. Coach is getting pissed off and everything else. You know what I'm saying? And it, it worked out worse for us because we couldn't get anything accomplished. Here, the next, you know, the next year I go to Green Bay. I'm in Green Bay, bro. It could be one little lone snowflake coming down. And if Brett Farr saw it, oh, we're in the indoor. We're in the indoor. <laughs> and we go to the indoor. It could be three raindrops coming down. Oh, we're in the indoor. We never practiced in the elements. We were always in the inside. That's crazy. I'm like, how is this a advantage? And I went, to, I went to Brett. I said, Brett, man, what's up with this, man? I'm, you know, when I play it everywhere else, we're just practicing outside. So we think you guys are practicing. He said, brother, we never practice outside. That's all a mind game. We get stuff done. I'm thinking to myself, they get stuff done and they win because they're inside getting their, you know, their plays down their thing. We're foolish on the outside. We're thinking they just outside practicing it and they're not. You know what I'm saying? We never get anything done. This was an advantage for them. Yeah. What is that? I, I, um, a, uh, what is that? A, Aaron, a what are you building, man? We got to do that every day. There's some kind of like sound, whatever the effect is that's going on. I don't know uh, why it's doing this because I'm not printing anything. It's my, <laughs> it's my laser printer. This thing, what the heck? Uh, <laughs> Derek, man, what are you doing? It's, it's, it's either Siri on my phone responding to a word I say or the printer has a mind. I'm telling you, man, technology. Mm -hmm. You see these movies, all these crazy movies about. Technology coming to life and taking over your house or your, right, right. your business, and it's happening. It, it, it's happening. We don't know it. I mean, you know, how many stories have we heard about? You know, when you keep upgrading these iOSs on your phone, it gives the government, the man, more access yep. to see what you're Big doing brother. and all this stuff. You know, and that they, you know, we heard the stories when it came to computers. You know, they can see you when you log on to your computer. I don't know what's true and what isn't, man. All I know is I got a phone that talks to me at any given moment. Yeah. And, a, and a printer that's, that got a mind of its own. 
Mm-hmm. I don't I know agree. what to believe anymore. I think there's a lot going on. All right. So speaking of a lot going on. So today we have Jeff McLean from the Inquirer at 1230. We'll talk to Jeff. Uh, owners meetings uh, just wrapping up. We'll talk to him about the Eagles. He's got a new podcast out. Uh, and, he, and he sits down with Lane Johnson. Lane Johnson recently of the uh, the extension. So we will talk to uh, Jeff at 1230. We'll hit some Phillies at 1 o'clock uh, pretty heavily because that was uh, – that was a bummer yesterday, guys. You know, it, it's, it was one of those deals where you're so hyped for the season. You're so excited. They get up 5 nothing. They knock the Grom out. You're like, oh, my God. Like, could this get any better? The get perfect storm. Up, and, and then implosion time in the in the bottom of the fourth inning. And and they, they run, the Rangers run off a nine spot on Aaron Nola. He gets knocked out. Soto comes in. He stunk. And they end up losing the game. I mean, it you was, know, it you was know, Rob emphasized the word stunk. Oh, yeah. he, put, he put an extra s- in there. I, I was so annoyed. I was so annoyed at that game. I mean, did I you throw even... anything in the TV? No, I'm not a throw. Like, I'm not sabotaging my own equipment. I'm, why you break know? my stuff? Like, I never understood that. Why I don't I break that my either. stuff, man? Yeah, right, I'm gonna punch right. the TV. No, right, I'm not. right. No, right, 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 right. No. That's why you, when you see all these videos after a team loses a big football game, you see the family sitting there, guy walks up, punches the TV, rips it off the wall, and throw. I am not tearing up my TV no. over a game. I don't know. I, I think I think eighty percent of those are fake anyway. I do that, too. That just, I agree. Um, but no, I'm with you. I'm I, like I, I never got. All right, let me compound the, your, your team losing by costing myself money by destroying my stuff. No thanks. Right. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Dude, uh, it, it, it wasn't the Yankees, it wasn't the Dodgers, the Mets, and the Braves. It was the Rangers that scored 11 runs in two innings on this team's vaunted pitching staff. Yeah. Yep. That makes it even more. Now, granted, it's only don't, one don't, of 162. That, it's only one of 162. <laughs> Better days are ahead, yes. But that first game, it was, if it was like nip and tuck the whole game, back and forth, you know, lead changes back and forth, Okay. Phillies had it was like when it was five nothing. I'm thinking, man, this is a carryover from spring training. Yep. I mean, he boys bombing, man. I went outside. I came back in six to five Texas. I had to look at the screen twice. Went back outside again. Nine five. What? Nine mm-hmm. five. Mm-hmm. What? The heck happened here? Is but again, there's only one down. 161 to go. Yeah, it's it's look. It, you're right. If it was if if the Grom was great and you lost two one. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I mean, what, what are you going to do? The guy's great. But you knock him out of the game. You got six extra base hits off of him. And he yep. lasts three and two thirds innings. Yep. And you lose. I mean, that that's the frustrating part of this game. Exactly. I mean, it was, exactly. it was tough. It was definitely tough. Um, so we got the draft 28 days away. And this is, you know, we'll dig into this with, with Jeff in, in a little bit, a little bit heavier. But just gut right now. All right. Four weeks out, basically less than four weeks, four weeks from yesterday. What's your gut saying? Barrett, what's your gut saying in terms of what they're going to do in the first round? Give me your gut right now. I think they're going defensive line, and um, it's going to be either Nolan Smith, Carter, um, or the the kid from uh, the kid from um, from 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 um, Clemson. You know, okay. when, I, when I'm when I'm looking at it, I, I, Miles Murphy, Miles Murphy, that's his name, Miles Murphy. So you know, I, I'm more than likely it's going to be Miles Murphy, Murphy, because I think Carter he's slipping. I'm looking, I'm looking at the stream. They're saying you know he's going to. He's gonna slip a little bit. Yeah, he might slip, buddy, but he's not gonna slip all the way to ten. I wish he would, but he's not gonna slip all the way to ten. Um, <laughs> Nolan Smith and Miles Murphy will be there at ten. Which one do you take? Do you get the speed outside guy, the the Hassan Red esque type of player, or do you get the guy that's gonna be a generational talent? Um, in Miles, Miles or or, or, or Carter? I think it's gonna be. I, I'm feeling Nolan Nolan Smith, frankly. You, I mean, at. well, can you play like that and stop the run when you have two guys, you know, versus the same size like that? You're, you're light. There? You're light. Yeah, you're yeah. light on the other yeah. side of the ball, too, especially if it's Jurgens and, and Kelsey. So you're going to be a lighter team. You could get pushed around in the trenches. Well, that's, that's you know, that's where. And, and, and you're light at linebacker. So you're light at four spots. You're light on both defensive ends and both linebackers. Mm. That's worrisome. Yeah. I mean, they couldn't stop the run with that, all that talent they had this past year. True. What are you gonna do with, with lesser talent, man? <laughs> well, I, they won't be necessarily lesser talent. It'll just be smaller talent. It's gonna be different. It'll be yeah, a different but... talent because I don't know. If, I don't know if TJ Edwards. I don't know how much you'll lose once. Once we get, you know, 
our linebackers in, you know, in, in the, I mean, Nicobe Dean's young. Yes, he is young. But is he any less talent than TJ Edwards? I don't know if he's less talented. Mm. He's got less size, but I don't know about as far as talent. Okay. Re- reaction. He got experience over uh, Nicobe Dean. And I think that's the biggest thing and the only thing, really, he has experience. If you look at Nicobe Dean, I think this kid is going to be a, a really good player. player. Okay, I'm going to go off of something that you preached all season long about this Eagles uh, Sasquatch offensive line against these smaller, faster defenses, okay? And you talked about how that offensive line would control, the, and we saw it time and yeah. time again. Yeah. Yeah. When you yeah. talk about this Eagles defense getting smaller and faster, I'm not comfortable when you say that because you got some – you know, we talk about how good this Eagles offensive line is. There's three, four, five teams that got some pretty good offensive lines out there that can maul people. Absolutely. You know? And Absolutely. Eagles play a few of them next year. Mm-hmm. And even an average offensive line, if they're big but not as talented as an Eagles line, bigger bodies move smaller bodies, right? Yeah, well, that, I mean, that's that's um, that's that's you know what Chip Kelly said. Big, big, big bad guys. People beat, beat up, up little people. That's yeah. right. And I'm not when you say that, I'm not comfortable. If that's the case, because you're right, as we look at, at it right now, they are going to be smaller. Yes, you very, know? very much so smaller, Derek. I mean, that's the only thing that, you know, comes with speed. Um, you got to be able to read and react fast. But if you if you get caught, <laughs> right, know, right. a smaller guy, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You get caught up in the wash. So I think they're I think they're look. there's a distinct possibility they could move down to 10, but I think they're definitely moving out of 30. I think that's the lock. Ten, it depends. I want to start this last day of March on a positive by saying, when you ask Barrett, what do you think they're going to do at 10? I've been adamant about a cornerback, but as I sit here on today on this last day of March at 12, 19 p.m., I am agreeing with Mr. Brooks 100%. I think they're going to go D-line. Yeah. Oh, oh, let, me, let me recover for about two Thanks, seconds. Derek. I think D line or offensive line. I think either uh, one is very much in play. I, I don't. Yeah. Eagles fans aren't going to be happy with the offensive yeah. line part. I get it, but I brought surprisingly, I brought that up earlier in the week about offensive line, and uh, Jacob Sports Media played that clip on Twitter, and I'm waiting for people to go ballistic, but people were relatively calm about it. Yeah, I can see it happening too. It might make sense finding the heir apparent for Lane Johnson. So I was shocked that people, you know, who love those sec- sexy picks. I want that cornerback. I want that wide receiver. I want that running you back. You know why? Uh, you know why? Because they're tired why? of being wrong and thinking we're going to get those sexy picks. They now know the philosophy and believe in the philosophy that the Eagles are doing. It's worked true. thus far. I just can't see them getting off as a lineman simply because I don't think there's, there is one that is worth that number 10 pick okay the value of the number 10 pick now they trade back and get like maybe 15 and get one of those offers line i can see them doing that and that would make sense and the only reason i say that also is because you got lane there for the next three years for sure you got lane there yep and you got you know you got jordan malata there for the next four years i don't think they go in that direction because of that right right if you look at it defensive line we're pretty old at the defensive line we're 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 kind of up there with BG and when you look Fletcher, it's, it's going to be tough to not come in and replenish the the troops. They've got to get some guys in there. You know, I mean, I I, I like the young guys. They, they just acquired a new uh, defense alignment. Uh, what's his name? Street from from New Orleans. Yeah. Now I I don't remember him. Remember him, but I saw a little bit of him last year. I didn't look at any film on him, but I, I remember watching the game and he came in and I said, man, he's kind of explosive. He gets up the field. He's a Milton Williams-esque type of player. You know, the kid can play, man. Now, I don't, I can't believe how he was ever get him. Like, he's one of those diamond and rough type of guys that he plays a lot, but he had three and a half sacks last year. Yeah. So give an opportunity, get let him play a little bit. He may surprise a lot of people, man. A lot of people. Thing, the thing is, in, in talking to a couple of people, he's Jeff a kind of player. He he's an either or player. He either shows up one play or doesn't show up the next play. He's not he's not been consistent. Great in terms of his play, yeah, of his yeah. overall play, and you know, and that's why the Saints were willing to give up on him. Um, mm-hmm. the, he never really panned out to be what they thought he would be, which would be that run stopper in the middle. 
Feast you know, of Famine type of character. Yeah, we're talking about Cantavius Street yeah. for people who aren't. Like, Cantavius, yeah. Cantavius Street. Yeah. A lot of yeah. times he disappears in a mix of things. So um, he's a body. He will help in a rotation to give people breathers. He'll make a play here or there. But don't expect him to be the second coming of Javon Hargrave. That's not going to happen. Right, mm -hmm. right. So, like I said, he's him and Milton Williams. You know, iron sharpens iron. Mm -hmm. And those two will battle it out for who's going to be uh, playing the most in that reserve mm -hmm. position. Now, I like that. You know, I like that not, you know, you're just going to be handed a position. I like that. Right. And I want, I want guys to be competing. I want this to be the most competitive, um, the most competitive, you know, locker room you can get. You know, you want those type of guys in your, in your system, you know. So, I mean, this, this will be, this will be eye-opening to me because, when you get in a position where you got smaller guys like they have, you got to be explosive up front. And that's what you have with Milton Williams. That's what we have with Street. Um, but then after that, it, it's tough. It's tough is still slim pickings, you know. Um, Jordan Davis, I like Jordan Davis, but Jordan Davis' sole role is not to be a guy that's going to be in the stat role. It's that, you know, he's not going to be in the stat line. He's not going to have a lot of stats. So if you're looking for him to have, you know, five sacks, six sacks during the year, you're, you're barking up the wrong tree. But if you look to him to be a guy that, I mean, I wish they had assist for tackles. Not like, you know, like that, not like a half a uh, half a tackle. Mm -hmm. assist like that, but someone assisted, he takes up three blockers and then somebody else goes and makes the play because of that. You know what I'm saying? You don't see those type of things in the stat line. But that's the role he's going to play in this defense. He's going to gobble up blockers, which allow somebody else to go out there and make a play. That makes it's sense. A, it's I mean, a look, he's an occupier. Yes. You know? Yes, that's it. More than anything else. Well, I, I don't want to see what happened in the Super Bowl where he got walled off and just pushed to one side continuously. Yeah. He, you know, Obviously, they've got to study the tapes there and find a way, better, better way to, to use his body type in terms of being that road, that immovable, immovable road grader, yeah, um, because that was too easy. What I saw Kansas City do to him, yeah. I mean, I, you know, and, and let's face it, it's a copycat league. Other people see this stuff, they start doing some of the same things, and then we're all screaming about Jordan Davis being a bust. I don't want to see that happen, you know. But that was shocking what I saw that last game of the season um, from Jordan Davis. Now, if he's talking about getting lighter. And he's still got to be a stout brought in here to be that, that dude that plugs the gaps so other people can make plays. Then they've got to find – the coaching staff, training staff has got to find that right balance so that, number one, losing that weight doesn't affect his strength and stamina, but yet he's still that rock of Gibraltar in the middle. Yeah, I mean, they said – I mean, the kid, what, what he run, a 4'8", 4'7"? 4'7", 4'8". Yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, that's huge that's, that's at 3'14". That's, that's absolutely incredible, bro, to be able to move and – you know, get up the field and that, that with that speed. If he comes back in shape and ready to rock and roll, mm -hmm. even then I can't see him being a guy that's going to have that many sacks. You usually, when you're that big, you don't get a lot of sacks. You know, it's easier to block a big guy, but it's also harder to move a big guy like that. Hey, Barrett, our producer Tone has a good question. Um, you said, Barrett, if that's Jordan Davis's sole role, was he overdrafted? Ooh. Absolutely. <laughs> Ooh. Absolutely. So you take it a guy where they took him, he needs to also get to the quarterback too. You're well, saying. I knew that he wasn't going to be that guy. That's why I, there, if you go back when our show first started yeah, and we talked about Jordan Davis, I said he is not the optimal guy to play in the defense that we play. He wasn't that guy for me. He never was that guy for me. If we look through the draft, all my predictions and everything else, go back and look at the film, go back and look at the tape. I was not a big fan on drafting Jordan Davis. After they did it, I'm like, all right, well, if they've re they, I'm like, all right, they're really changing the scheme. They're really going to go out there and play a 3 4 or a, or, or a 50 defense. That's what it was 50 defense. They're going to play a 50 defense, meaning the head up guy over the um, center, the nose, mm -hmm. is going to be a guy like Tony Saragusa, a guy like Casey Hampton, somebody you just can't move. A Vincent Woolfork type of player. And then you covered up um, tackles, I mean the guards with tackles that can get up the field and move. So I was I was like, okay, then that's why they're doing this. 
I'm good with the pick because they're going into a real 30 front or 50 front. So I was good with it. So now I am still good with it, but I won't be good with the pick. And I think it'll be he Jim drafted too high if they go into a system where they're trying to get up the field and one gap and 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 create havoc that way. Cause then you just wasted it. You wasted the pick in um in last year's draft because of it. If you're playing one gap, like when you play those like Vincent Wolfork, Sarah Goosa, Casey Hamptons, those guys are two gap players. Meaning they're gonna take the guys in front of them. Press him and look on either side and see where the ball is going. Read and react. While he's reading and reacting, he's pressing the guy into the backfield. Mm-hmm. That's what he is. He's not a guy that's going to take our take one gap, kill the field, and go. That's Milton Williams' job. Fletcher Cox, Hargraves. That's what those guys do. Okay, he's not that guy. Mm-hmm. So he's not fitting the system. If they're if if they are going in like they did um, last year, he's not going to fit the system. Gotcha. All right. Well, let's get a timeout. Let's continue this. We'll keep this conversation going with uh, Jeff McLean when we come back. Uh, plenty to dig into with him, with the owners' meetings, et cetera. So we'll do all that when we return. Don't go anywhere. Derek Gunn, Barrett Brooks, Rob Ellis. We're Sports Take, Jacob Sports YouTube Network. I'm going to tell you right now about Bravo Pizza of Havertown. Yes, thrilled that they are a part of the show, man. And guess where I'll be heading for dinner tonight? Yes, it will be Bravo Pizza of Havertown. I've literally been going there since I was a kid. Family-owned since 1985, Alex and the great crew, they're open seven days a week, and the food is fresh every single day. There's no carryovers, nothing sitting under that heat lamp. No, they are fresh every single day. They offer 20 different styles of pizza daily. They have slices, and I personally, I'm going to go get it upside down. That's where I'm headed. Uh, but they also give you the option of specialized pizza your way. You call up, you tell them what kind you want. They'll make it for you. And, but they have 20 different styles alone on top of that. Not just pizza, by the way. Fresh pasta, sandwiches, wraps, wings, salads. Bravo's also committed to the community. They have fundraisers for charities, schools, little leagues. Proceeds go to those organizations. You can follow them on Instagram and Facebook for specials and promotions at the Bravo Pizza of Havertown. Bravo Pizza of Havertown, 1305 Westchester Pike in the Manoa Shopping Center. In Havertown, the number 610-446-3810, 610-446-3810. Guess what? I'm telling you what it looks like. Why don't you check it out for yourself? Here's a little sampling of what goes on at Bravo 